We're gonna create and interpret dot plots here in this here video. Now I like dot plots, I think they're real nice. Um, but here's the thing, they only work for smallish data sets. If you've got like, I don't know, more than 20, 30 numbers, they can get real tough. So let's look at what does it mean to create a dot plot? And first of all, a dot plot is simply a graph that has dots that show an organized way to show data. So let's kind of think about this. If we're going to create a dot plot, we're going to find the min and maximum values. I like to put mine in the order least to greatest just to organize my values before I start. We're going to create a horizontal line. And on that horizontal line, we're going to put our values starting at the minimum and then equidistant values all the way up until we get the maximum. So you can think that dot plots are also not good if you have a really big range of data because you've got to write all of these numbers on a horizontal number line. Now, number three is to draw a dot above a value, above the value for each number in the data set. So if there are 20 numbers in your data set, you should have 20 dots on your graphic. All right, so let's do this. Dwayne gave a survey, scale of one to five, to his 12 worker people. The results are below. Create a dot plot, show the result. Now, I've organized the data for you. You're welcome. Because, uh, you know, time. So you can see, obviously, if this is scale of one to five, we have data in one to five. So we draw our horizontal line and we start at one, two, three, four, five. Now I freehanded this, so obviously it's not very straight, but you can see our, my numbers are pretty much equidistant. So from here, we can now say, okay, let's add dots. So for number one, there are two of them. So I'm going to put two. Oh, dots are hard when you're freestyling. So two dots. There is only one number two, so I only need one dot. There are three threes, so one, two, three. Hopefully your dots are prettier than mine. Two fours, one, two, and four fives. So one, two, three, four. Now we know that there are, were 12 coworkers. Oy. So there should be 12 dots. So let's just count them real quick. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So you can see it's a small range of numbers, 1 to 5. Pretty small number of values in our data set, just 12. And we have ourselves a dot plot. So it's easy to see, right? The point of a dot plot, it's a nice visual representation. We can say, hey, plenty of fives. We had a couple of threes, but you know, most of them were between three, four, and five. That's what we want. Okay, and well, I'm guessing, I'm not sure what the, what the survey was. Now, if you're interpreting a dot plot, that simply means you're looking at a dot plot and you're telling me something you noticed. So if I look at this, this dot plot is on family size and the number of children in a family. So we can see the most common number of children in a single family is three. It's the tallest bar, it's got the most dots followed closely by two. So we can say two or three children is the most common. What is the least common? Four, which kind of surprises me. I feel like five would be less common than four, but not according to this dot plot. It's kind of symmetric in that the tallest bar is in the middle, and then it fans out in either direction. Um, but that, those are some of the interpretations, right? So when you're interpreting a graph, whether it's a dot plot or something else, it doesn't matter. It simply means what information can you draw from the graph itself? I'm not speculating. It's simply three is the tallest bar. It's got the most dots. That is the most common. Four is the least common. I'm not saying why because I don't know. I only know what the bars tell us. Uh, the bars there are made up of dots. All right. Oh, by the way, math is not based on opinion. It's based on fact. So only use what you know, not what you think. Thanks, all.